I'm going to begin by speaking about Yocheved and Miriam. Now, Yocheved was the mother of Moses, the wife of uh, Amram, who was Moses' father. They were descendants of Levi, a Jacob's son, and Miriam was his sister. And these two women constitute spiritual midwives. They were physical midwives, but they were also spiritual midwives. Now, when we take the story of the Exodus, I'll speak for myself. I certainly didn't think that Yocheved or Miriam played a role at all. Oh, Miriam was the one who stood in private space, in those bulrushes, watching the baby. But she wasn't the glorious leader in the public realm who led the people out under a banner and gave them the Torah and directed the course of Jewish life forevermore. She was way too hidden for me to be able to pick up with my Western senses who she really is. And it took for me to be exposed to the teachings of our sages and particularly the great merit of learning some talks of the Rebbe about Yocheved and Miriam to come to understand, my gosh, I would not be here today. In fact, in a particular uh, talk of the Rebbe, he says that Miriam fought, um, braved the river, the Nile River, and the crocodiles of Pharaoh. Now many people, I guess, think that the, the Nile River is like a nice stream going down. You know, when you come to a, a river, I, I, I've been on safari in Africa. You take people to those rivers, there's hippopotami and crocodiles, they are huge, like they take two bites and the whole body just goes into it. Now Miriam went and stood in those bulrushes. There's water, it's kind of muddy and swampy over there because her brother is in the water. And the Rebbe says it was her gaze and her attachment to her brother that drew Batya to the water who saved him. Her belief, her vision pulled him out. But then he goes on and says, in every generation, we have to fight the crocodiles of the river of Pharaoh. The particular idolatry of that time and age. And there are crocodiles that are going to devour us. And where does each one of us get the fortitude to be able to withstand the, the, the bite of those crocodiles? Miriam. She is standing right here with each one of us, watching us and saving us from the river and the crocodiles of Pharaoh. That's what the Rebbe says. All hidden in the bulrushes. But you know, when, you, when you're going down the river and you're waiting for the, the fanfare and here's the, you know, here's the trumpet announcing, Miriam's standing over there, so we don't pay attention. And the two of them form a balance. Yocheved, we are told, Rashi tells us a very interesting thing, it's brought from the Medrash, was born in no man's land between the Holy Land and Egypt. What does that mean? There was an area, I guess, you know, like if you go to Jordan today or Lebanon, you see this is where the Holy Land ends and then there's a fence, you can kind of see it in the distance and that's where the next border begins, but in between there's no man's land. And it so happens that Yocheved was born right there between those two places. What is the significance of it? Yocheved had a remarkable ability. She was connected. When you are in no man's land, you are nowhere, but you are everywhere at the same time, like a mezuzah. The mezuzah is on the threshold. Where is the mezuzah? Inside or outside? Neither. But it is also in both places because it is there. That's why the blessing that we say on the mezuzah is likboa, to fix the mezuzah. But the word mezuzah comes from the word zaz, to move. It's fixed right there, nowhere. And it moves, it's everywhere. So to Yocheved. She's in no man's land, but because of that, she has access to two things. One was her memory. 
She knew what Israel was like, what the Holy Land was like. You know, one of the greatest traps that people can fall into is that we're in exile, and as we said, we don't remember that we're in exile. This becomes the norm. As our sages say, Yedias hamachla chetzi refur. The knowledge of the illness is half of the healing. So I have to know that I am in exile before I can be redeemed. And Yochebed remembered. She had in her unconscious, there in her soul print, the Holy Land. That allowed her to give women hope, to relate to them in a way that wasn't only about the suffering. At the same time, you know, sometimes you encounter someone and they're in Lala land. It's like, oh, everything's okay and it's hunky-dory and you think, well, can you empathize? Can you connect with me? Can you experience my suffering? Be here with me in that pain. She was nowhere and everywhere. So she was connected to the land of Egypt and she experienced the people's suffering. She could empathize with them in Egypt and with that memory of the past and being pre present to the present, she was able to pull the people out. In a different talk, the Rebbe actually says what she gave birth to, what she helped the people birth into was their faith. Yocheved fed faith to the people. And therefore she was able to be the mother of the redeemer of the people because we are redeemed through our faith. And she gave birth to a young girl who partnered with her in the spiritual midwifery, taking the people out of Egypt. What's the story of Miriam? So all of us know that Miriam is named for the bitterness of exile. Her name is Miriam from the word Mar, which is bitter. Now you know there are seven species in the Holy Land, and there are seven prophetesses. Each one is associated with a different like Devorah is with the date, she sat under the date tree. Miriam is the olive. One year, a couple of years ago, I happened to be in California, I was speaking. <clears throat> I had not been well, and I didn't have a voice to start with. Now many shluches, when they make the events, they want it to be really beautiful, so they have it outside, and there's a, if there's a fountain, all the better. And this was Shabbat. So on Shabbat afternoon, there was a wind and the fountain, and I'm outside, and I'm trying to speak and project. I had no voice by the end of Shabbos. So one of the women there comes over to me. She says, you know, I have olive tincture. Would you like some? It's very good for the voice. So I said to her, excellent. She brings it to me. She says, you should just know it's very bitter. Now, I take echinacea and basil tincture, you know, like, I'm like, no problem, you know. I pick up this thing, full, full dropper of, of olive tincture, and I put it in my throat, and literally, I just spat it out. I blurted it out, because I had never tasted anything as bitter. And I stood there, and I, I got it. Miriam is named for the bitterness. The height of the suffering. Like, what do people say? When were the worst years in Russia under Stalin, Yamashmo? 50s, 53? What, he died in 53, so maybe between 1950, 53? Miriam was born at the height of the suffering of the Jewish people. And she was named for that. And just as her mother had empathy for the people in their suffering, so too did she. Her mother is memory and present, past and present. Miriam is about the present and the future. In the present, she could relate to the people suffering. But she had a vision for the future. So she says to her father, I have a prophecy. A child will be born through you who will redeem the Jewish people. He had separated from his wife because he didn't want there to be more children brought into the world with such terrible suffering. She says, what are you doing? Pharaoh's destroying the boys and you're destroying the boys and the girls? So he says to her, you're right. Based on your vision, I will remarry your mother. And he got married. And the Medrash tells us that at that wedding, Miriam played a drum. She played on a drum, kind of 
celebrating in the wedding. She was five years old. And at that time, when they got married that night, Amram and Yochevet were intimate and Moses was conceived. He was born six months later. After six months, this baby comes into the world and his mother could hide him for three months. But at the end of three months, everyone knew this is the leader of the Jewish people. She was pregnant. What's happening? They came looking for the child. So now Yochevet had to hide her baby. And the Medrash tells us that Miriam went to the water and she looked into the, into the river and her father came to her. And he hit her like he tapped her on the head. And he said to her, look, look at the water. Where is your prophecy now? Like a oh, big dreamer, right? You had a prophecy. Get married, a redeemer will be born. Well, your redeemer is wrapped in a little basket with, you know, smelly stuff on the outside and fragrant stuff on the inside. But here's a three-month-old infant that's born prematurely. My boys were born, my twins, at 28 weeks. I know that when they were three months old, they were the equivalent of three weeks old. Four weeks. He has an infant baby who was born at six months in the river, crocodiles around. Where's your prophecy? And the Rebbe says in every generation, we are challenged in this way, where our father, our intellect comes to us and says, you're a dreamer. You think that you're going to envision a better tomorrow. Come on, bam. You know, we are like children or we find the childlike space and we say, what, what does Annie say? The sun will come out tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, tomorrow. It's going to be good. I envision a great future for us. And then it doesn't work. And we see our dreams floating in the river, threatened. And our father, our mind, our intellect comes and says, what's your problem? You think you have a prophecy? Get real. But Miriam did not accept that. She stood there and she kept on gazing at her brother. She believed so fully. She saw, she was so attached to her vision, to the future, that she drew Batya to the water and Moses was saved. And for this reason, the Medrash calls Miriam the Redeemer. Not Moses, Miriam the Redeemer of the Jewish people. And each one of us is here today because of a woman named Miriam. Just as each one of us is here today because of a woman named Esther. There's no way we could be present if it weren't for these great women. So Miriam waits, she was six years old, or she turned six years old just after Moses was born. He was born on the 7th of Adar and her birthday is the 10th of Nisan, just one month later. She's six years old and she waits. When she's 86 years old, the Jewish people go out of Egypt. And they go out, 80 years, she held on to her vision, right? They come out and they miraculously pass through the waters of the sea. And then the Bible tells us, and Miriam, the sister of Aaron, took her drum and began to play and dance. And Rashi says, why is she called Miriam the sister of Aaron? What's the big deal? Miriam, the daughter of Amram, the daughter of Yocheved, the brother of the sister of Moses. Why the sister of Aaron? And he says, because she prophesied about that moment when she was still only the sister of Aaron and Moses had not been born. So I've never seen it anywhere, but it seems to me so profound. Whenever we read about Miriam, we read about water in the Torah. Murrah, they were at Murrah, they didn't have water, and we read about Miriam, etc. The last letters of her name are Yud and Mem, which spell the word Yam, ocean. It seems to me that Miriam is Mar Yam, bitterness and the ocean. Yes, I'm born into this terribly bitter present, but I have a vision of an ocean. And maybe I will have to hold on 
to that drum for 80 years, but I keep on playing the drum. I don't let it go. I don't sell it in a secondhand thing or a yard sale. I hold on obstinately to that drum and I allow myself to be fed psychically, spiritually, by Miriam standing watching the crocodiles in Pharaoh's river. You know, there's a chassid, his name is Rip Mendel Futterfuss, and he described how when he was um, in Soviet camps, he watched a man who was a tightrope walker walking on the tightrope. And he, the man, when he finished, said to him, do you know how I do it? You know, they all respected me, Rip Mendel, and he came to him, he said, do you know how I, how I managed to do this? So he said, yes. He says, tell me, what's the secret to tightrope walking? He said, you never take your eye off the pole. You never look down. You're always looking at the opposite pole. He said, you're absolutely right. So if that's the case, can you tell me what's the most difficult part? So he says, the turn. He says, how did you know? He says, because you've got nothing to keep your eye focused on. We have to hold the thought in our mind. There is one pole, my past, and one pole, my future. The Yocheved Miriam paradigm. If I remember, I have to be fully in the present. That's the only way to really live our lives with joy. So we have to have that Yocheved paradigm, which is I remember where I come from. And at the same time, no matter how challenging this moment, I have a vision of the future, the yam, the ocean. I'm holding my drum. I know that I'm going to be playing that drum when we all cross over into the new reality.